Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a differential equation. We have dy over dx equals the square root of xy. So we're looking for a function y of x such that when we differentiate, we get the product of the square root of x and y or the square root of the product, which is the same thing, right? Pretty much. Great. So let's go ahead and see how we can solve a problem like this. Usually, when you have problems like these, for example, if we had dy over dx equals the square root of y over x or the square root of x over y, we usually change the variables, even though we don't have to, right? Because y over x can be called something like u, and then from here we get y equals ux, we can differentiate both sides, y prime becomes the derivative of u times x plus the derivative of x times u. And then you can substitute and hopefully get something better, right? But in this case, we don't need to do that and we can't do that actually. So how do we solve an equation like this? So that brings us to the concept of separable differential equations, which is basically one of the easiest kinds, right? You want your equation to be separable so that y's are on one side and x's are on the other side so that you can integrate both sides with respect to whatever variable you have on either side, and then you'll get a clear expression from there. In this case, do we have a separable equation? The answer is yes. Why? Because if you go ahead and write this as the square root of x times the square root of y, which is a property of the radicals, but of course, you need to be careful. For example, the square root of x, y is defined even if x and y are both negative, but the square root of x and square root of y are not defined for negative x, y values. Make sense? So that's the distinction between these two things. Otherwise, you should be good. Now, how do we separate the variables? We put y's on one side and x's on the other. I usually pick the left-hand side for y because we're used to writing uh, y as a function of x as opposed to x as a function of y. By the way, some functions can be that way too, okay? Uh, you can just find the inverse function and go from there. So let's go ahead and bring the square root of y over here on the left, like dividing both sides by square root of y and multipl multiplying by square root of x. Some people are going to object saying that this is not a fraction. <laughs> well, too bad. Even if it's not a fraction, it acts like a fraction, okay? So it is kind of like a fraction, whatever. So now we were able to separate, and if you wanted to do, do it in two steps, that's fine too, like you can also do this, and then divide both sides by this, and it'll give you the exact same thing, make sense? So now the variables are separated, what should we do? Well, you need to integrate, right? That's the next step. So let's go ahead and integrate both sides with respect to whatever variables we have. So we're gonna have to integrate one over square root of y and square root of x, which are both power rules. So we can write the square root of y in the denominator. We can write it as y to the power negative one half. And when you integrate something like this, you gotta use the power rule. What's the power rule? If you have y to the n dy, it's y to the n plus one divided by n plus one plus the constant. Now. In this case, I'd like to keep the constant on the right-hand side because you don't need constants on both sides because the difference of two constants, let's say you have c sub 1 here and c sub 2 here, you know, other things as well, and then you can kind of bring it over here and write it as c1 minus c2, which is again a constant. So there is no need to or bring it to the other side, doesn't matter. So you don't really need constants on both sides, I'm going to keep it on the right-hand side. But in this case, there's only one exception which you need to be careful about. If you're new to calculus, or maybe you haven't even taken it, and should not be negative one. If n is negative one, we have one over y dy, which is actually the ln y plus c. That's a special case, okay? Anyways, in this case, it works. Our formula, we're gonna add one. It's gonna make it one, negative one half plus one is one half, and then we have to divide by one half. And of course, the constant will be added later, but this should mean two times y to the power one half, which is two times the square root of y. But there's also another way to look at this integral. If you do know that the derivative of the square root of y, or I should say, I think I should use x in this case, because uh, if I use the square root of y with respect to x, it's gonna be a different story. I have to add 
the derivative of y as well from chain rule. But let's just go ahead and take a look at this. It's this one, something that you should memorize. I think it's a good idea uh, to memorize these kinds of things because they come up a lot. And also when you see an integral like this, I mean, it'll be more meaningful. For example, suppose you're, you're trying to integrate something like this, you know, you should immediately, that's not what I meant actually, or maybe something like this. Anyways, this is what I was trying to say. Uh, it's good to have it in this form because you can always, you know, integrate easily. Anyways, I don't know what I was trying to say. But here, here's what, the trick I'm gonna use. I'll put a two here and a two here. So putting a two in the denominator basically means multiplying by one half. That's why multiplying by two is justified. Make sense? Now, once I get that, the rest should be fairly easy if you know that the derivative of square root function is one over two times the square root function. So now this is gonna be two times the square root of y, which is the uh, integral of one over two root y with respect to y, of course, not with respect to x, equals, and on the right-hand side, unfortunately, I have to use the power rule, but that's okay. This will become x to the power three halves divided by three halves, plus c, of course, I'm gonna use the constant here, but this turns into two thirds, so I can kind of write it like this, times x to the power three halves. x to the power three halves can be written as x root x, that's usually a common way to write it. It's a total up to you. If you wanna use the rational powers, you know, that's fine too. No big deal, it doesn't matter that much, but you can. And then plus C will do the trick, right? Now let's go ahead and clean it up a little bit here so we can write our answer in the simplest form. First of all, I noticed that I don't want a two by the square root of y. So why don't we just divide everything by two? That gives us square root of y equals one third x root x plus half of C. But guess what? Uh, C is a constant, half of C is also constant, so it's okay to replace half of C with C. I know some people are gonna be saying, oh, you need to say C sub one. Too bad, I can call this C sub one, and half of C sub one can be C. Doesn't matter, no big deal. Don't get stuck on those things. Some people get stuck on little things, and obviously they can't progress. So, my goal is actually to solve for Y as a function of X, but I didn't, right? But that's okay, because we got the square root of Y, the rest is fairly easy to do. What you need to do is square both sides and you'll get the answer, nice. Now, when you square both sides, you're gonna get Y, which is nice. When you square the first term, you're gonna get one ninth. This is X squared times X, which is X cubed. That explains the X to the power three halves, plus C squared, plus two AB, which is gonna give us two over three C, x square root of x. Now, in this case, you don't really have a lot of uh, freedom in terms of replacing c squared with another constant, even though you can, uh, but these two c's are the same, so you're gonna make sure that uh, they are still associated, okay? So that's basically expressing a y in terms of x, and this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care. Don't forget to check out my other channel that focuses on complex numbers, A plus B, I, and bye-bye.